welcome. I'm here today visiting the David Brown Tractor Club at their museum here in Meltham, where I'll be chatting some enthusiasts about their tractors. But before I do, let's head on over and listen to Tom Pepper's story about his fabulous journey from John O'Groats to Land's End. That direction is all of you lot. You're somewhere that way. Um, chances are, if you're watching this in the UK, I'm above you right now. Hey Siri, find me the directions to Land's End. OK. There we go. Right, starter up. Thousand miles. Starts here. Ready? I'm ready. Wish me luck. Let's go. Hello, my name is Tom. This is my tractor, also known as Old Red, and I took this tractor on the John O'Groats to Land's End trip. It was for charity. It took me about 14, 15 days to complete. Overall, I ended up doing about 1,000 miles on it. So this is a 1954 David Brown tractor, like the rest of them at the, at the museum today. And it was a family-owned tractor. It's been in the family for quite some years, and it's never actually been on the road. I had to go through the process of getting it road registered. So it went from never being on the road its entire life to doing a thousand mile trip and hoping nothing goes wrong. Um, it's never, never really got serviced properly before I took it on the run. So it was an actual challenge. A couple of things about it, it's top speed was, as I found out, about 13 mile an hour with the wind behind it. And um, only to find out from some experts that it probably could have gone quite a bit faster had I have give it that uh, bit of attention. But I didn't, so I, it, it took, me, took me that long to do. I had a little trailer on the back. I was sleeping in the trailer and ended up in some kind of hairy situations and places I probably shouldn't be sleeping in some gale force storms while I'm kind of editing my little videos together because I was putting it out and because it was for charity, putting the videos out meant that people could donate and, and in the end donated quite a bit of money for it. But the, the, the tractor's got a special place in my heart now and it, it lives here in the museum for the time being. And along the way, people who donated got to sign in gold pen on the bonnet. Um, it just made it that little bit more special. That's kind of the basic story of this tractor and the trip that I took it on. And, I hope to do something like that again in the future. I first got involved with the club through the trip. Now, I, I didn't really know that much about them, but they reached out to me when I started the promotional part of this trip, and they've kind of taken me in ever since, and I've been part of the David Brown family, if you will. And it became, it was, it was a really nice thing. I, I, I was traveling across some mountainous areas in Scotland, and there could be someone pulled up at the side of the road who you, has got like a David Brown top on, and they're like, go on, Tom. I'm like, how do you even know I'm here? And there's people coming out of the woodwork all up and down the country, and it's big in thanks to the club who've kind of, you know, taken me under the wing and, and uh, promoted the whole thing. <laughs> Fortunately, being David Brown quality, it never actually broke down on me. Uh, you'd think something like this that's never been, you know, properly serviced, it's never been uh, looked after, it's never been roadworthy, you'd think you'd have some problems. Nothing, absolutely nothing. It was great. There was perhaps one time where there was slight electrical, it wouldn't start, but within three minutes it was up and running and gone again. And everybody... Uh, again, in people involved in the club, there was many people who said, oh, if you break down, if you break down, you can come to me. Well, thank you, but I don't actually need you. Like, we, we don't know how, we kept going, we made it to the end, and yeah, brilliant little thing. It just, it never let me down. Adam. Now, Adam is not only the president of the David Brown Tractor Club, but he is the grandson of Sir David Brown himself. Welcome, Adam. Thank you. 
Now, tell me, what was it like growing up with a granddad like Sir David? Well, it certainly wasn't boring, that is for sure. <laughs> he, he was very hands-on grandfather. He taught us to water ski, to ride, to drive, all sorts of things. Um, although he was an extremely busy man, obviously. Yes. And don't forget, in his height, or at his height, he would have employed something like 14,000 people. Wow. So we weren't talking just about the tractor business, which I'm greatly honoured to be the president. We've got the gear business, which was also massive. Yeah. And, of course, the legendary Aston Martin as well. Of course. Now, many people don't realise that there is a connection between David Brown tractors and Aston Martins. Now, I've spoken to many Aston Martin owners over the years, and even they didn't realise what DB stands for. Would you like to enlighten everybody? Of course. Of course, it is David Brown. It is dear grandfather. Mm. And what, to think that at the end of the Second World War in 1947-48, uh, when there were strikes, when there was the Great Freeze, when everything was black with coal, uh, that my grandfather would set about buying uh, two sport, sports car companies, uh, Aston Martin. Do we know the, how much he paid for that sports car? I think car it was company. in the 20 grand mark right. of the, in those days. Uh, but he didn't, wasn't, didn't just do that, but he also managed to buy La Gonda as well. So he managed to weld the two together, if you like, mm -hmm. for the La Gonda engine, which was a W.O. Bentley engine, and pop that into the first Aston Martin of a DB, David Brown. It starting with, uh, of course, was the DB1, mm -hmm. or DB sports car. Then we went on to the DB2, DB Mark III, mm -hmm. which Bond had. DB4, DB5, DB6, DBS, and so on and so forth. All because of his initials, David Brown. Mm. And I'm astounded. Over the, the last year or so, I've spoken to that many Aston Martin owners, and they do not know what the DB stands for. Well, we'll have to make it our mission then, won't we? We to will, to educate, educate, them, edu educate the masses <laughs> of Aston Martin owners. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. 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 But uh, the Aston Martin owners do know... Um, that a lot of engineering background came from the tractor business. Mm. Often when there were problems, the Aston Martin guys were helped out by the tractor guys. Yeah. Uh, because the tractor guys were the, some of the best engineers in the world. Also, going backwards, of course, the gear business was involved, had some of the best engineers in the world as yeah. well. Yeah. And also, never forget that Sir David himself was a, a fellow of the Institute of Mechanical Engineers. Mm. So he knew his stuff as well. So we all understand the importance of getting the David Brown Tractor Club back into this building where the original production line started. Um, and I'm sure you would agree that Sir David would be thrilled to learn that they are all back here. That's absolutely true. He'd be delighted to think that his baby, and it was his baby, the David mm. Brown Tractor business, has come back home. Yes, absolutely. Now, I have heard that um, the building has a little bit more of a historical connection with the family even before the David Brown tractors. That's correct. Uh, before tractors uh, settled back here, uh, during the Second World War, uh, the Spitfire gearboxes were made here. And during uh, the Battle of Britain, the Germans obviously were trying to hunt everybody who was making anything for the Spitfires. Of course. But they never managed to find this little factory here in, in this valley. And the Spitfire gearboxes were actually hand finished by file, by girls, filing away. And uh, they were absolutely critical to the success of the Battle of Britain, which of course was critical to us winning the war. What a fabulous story. Very good. Thank you very much. Not at all.
Crikey, Phil, this is a big one, isn't it? It is. It's the biggest production tractor made here. It's a 1694, and it made in that building right over there. Just down there, that's yep. where it was built? It was. Brilliant. And how long has it been in your ownership? I bought it in 2011 and spent three and a half years restoring it. So three and a half years before you actually got it back on the road? Yeah, in between my other jobs. And when I say back on the road, it's not back in a field, is it? Because you're not from a farming background. I'm not, no, I'm a car mechanic. So this is basically just a toy, isn't it? It is a toy. The interesting tractors comes from my father and my granddad, who both worked at David Brown's. Yeah, and what did they do? My at David granddad Brown? was manufacturing engineering manager. We sent him all over the world when he worked there. And my dad worked at Experimental, and he loved it. And did Grandad and Dad own a tractor also? In that, my Grandad never owned a tractor. My Dad's had a few, and he's still got two now, which he plays about. They're both restored. Yeah. And does tractor runs for charity and things like that with them. And I've seen you at a couple of shows in the past. Yeah, so take it to shows. Take it to shows. Show it off in all its beauty. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's quite rare. They only made 330 of this model in this colour. Ah, oh, really? So it's quite rare. Well, thank you very much, Phil, for fetching this giant tractor to see us today. Well, I really hope you enjoyed part one. Join us back in a moment where I'll be chatting to more enthusiasts in part two. We at MRQK UK are leading aftermarket suppliers of tractor and engine parts for a wide range of applications, supplying a large variety of parts across agricultural, construction and industrial vehicles. You'll find everything you need in one place. Visit our website where you can view our complete range of parts or get in touch with our knowledgeable sales team on 0113 255 2344. MRQK, UK, the original replacement.
Welcome back. I'm here with Roger, who is the secretary of the David Brown Tractor Club. Hello there, Roger. Hello, Sarah. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Great stuff. Now, Roger, you're the secretary of the club. Tell us a little bit more about the club, its history, how long it's been going. The club's been going for around about 26 years now. Uh, we're based in Meltham, where the tractors were originally built. And we have a membership of around 1,400 people. Wow, 1,400. Is that worldwide or is it just based in this area? It is worldwide. We have people from Australia, Canada, uh, South America, all over the place really. That's but the majority is in this country. Yeah, brilliant. And how would somebody become a member of the David Brown Tractor Club? Uh, we have a website that you could visit and you can join on the website or there's various social media that we're on. Uh, you can contact us through that as well or come into the museum and join over the shop counter. Yeah, so you have open days here. We have an open day once a month, yes. Yeah, fantastic. And people can just come with the families, have a little look around, join up if they want to. <laughs> Yes. Fantastic. So uh, back in May of this year, yes, I was here to actually open this brand new museum. You were. We're very so, happy to have you. Oh, thank you very much. It was a fabulous, a fabulous day and a mm. really, really important one for the club. Uh, tell everyone a little bit about that and why this building is so important. This building is important to the club, the heritage, the history of the club and the area and David Brown Tractors because it's in this very building that back in 1939 David Brown first started producing the tractors in Meltham. That is fabulous. I mean, you must have been over the moon when this place came up and you must have thought, this is meant to be. We were very excited because we had a limited time left in the old museum because the landlords were redeveloping it and we weren't going to be part of that. Yes. So this property came up just at the right time for us. It was definitely meant to be. It was fit. It was It destiny. was fit for the tractors, wasn't it, to be yeah. back in this building. Yeah, the tractors are back home. Yeah, they are back home. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about some of the tractors that are held here in the museum. They're obviously owned by club members. The majority of the tractors are members' tractors. Um, the club owns some of the tractors that are in here, mm. but the members' tractors, it's a great way of showing different tractors. We rotate them so we can have all different machines. Every open day we try to have something different for people to see. Today we've got a very famous plough tractor um, that was based locally, won national championships with it. Um, next open day we'll have something else in different. Fantastic. And do you have a tractor here of your own? I do. I have a, a VAC one from 1943, which was the original David Brown tractor. It, didn't, it wasn't even called VAC one then, it was just the David Brown tractor because there was no other David Brown tractor, it was the first it one. It was the David Brown tractor, yes, the it, one and only David at the time. At the time, yeah. Now, you're obviously not old enough to have earned that from brand new. Not quite. Roger. Almost, but not <laughs> quite. So how long has it been in your ownership? Um, six months. Oh, only six months. <laughs> yeah, I've been trying. Um, to, I've been trying to purchase a VAC one for probably six years, but there weren't that many built, and they don't come up for sale that often. So I've tried in the past, not been able to get hold of them. But this time it it came. And for me. and how many are actually left? Uh, I don't know exactly how many are left. There were around about 5,000 produced during the war from 1939 to 1945. Mm. Um, I don't know that we have a record of exactly how many right. are left. They can be in barns and people have forgotten about yeah. them, that's a problem. Yeah, absolutely. They just keep reappearing. Don't they, they do, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, thank you very much for joining us today, Roger. It's been a pleasure talking to you as always. Now, let's go look at some tractors. I've been joined by club member Jason who has very kindly brought his tractor down to the open day today. Hello Jason. Hello. Now then would you like to tell us all about this beautiful piece of machinery? Yeah it's um, it's a case 1394 it's 36 years old I got it on my 16th birthday. So you've had it at least five years then Jason? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and yeah. so you've earned it for how long? 36 years. You've earned it for 36 years. Yeah. Now it looks to be in really, really good condition. 
has it been restored at all? Yeah, quite a lot. We've done gearbox, engine, front axle, back axle, brakes, clutches, full cab refurb. And, and was that, re is that because it was in a state of disrepair? Kind of, yeah. yeah. It was yeah. all needed. Start again, we really. And have you had a little bit of help from the club members here? Yeah, one or two and a few friends and me. One of my best friends is a paint spray and works in a garage, so obviously he did all ah, the, it's always handy the paint having, work. It's always handy having friends that know what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Brilliant. But, yeah, but enough help. Good. I'm glad to hear it. That's what being a club member's all about, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. So now it's been restored and it's back all in working order, does it do a day's work or is it kept nice and clean in a barn somewhere? No, it, it does um, all the raking. I was, was around baling and fetched a few bales in now and again. And oh, that's great to hear. It still works. Yeah, so yeah. it gets out and about. Yeah, it used to, before its restoration, when Browns were in to go, it used to all the snow plowing around Browns and... Really? Great around the factory and car parks. Oh, what a great bit of history. Yeah. Fantastic. A few years ago. Yeah, it would have been, weren't it? Yeah. 80s. Back in the 80s. Back in the 80s. Back in the good old days, eh? Definitely, by far. So Jason, the question is, now you've got it running beautifully, will you ever part with it? Never. Is it here to stay? It's, it's here to stay. It's part of the family? It's part of the family. I'll like, have donated to the, to the club or to my daughter or son or grandsons or grand. I'm really, really pleased to hear daughters. that you're going to hang on to it. Definitely. Yeah, that's really good news. Thank you very much for talking to us today Thanks. and showing us your fabulous David Brown tractor. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. We've had a fabulous day here at the David Brown Tractor Museum. It's been a pleasure chatting with enthusiasts and club members. Best of all for me, though, has been getting to know the tractors a little bit more. See you next time.